Ain't yeah. nobody gonna make what I'm the one who made Lonzo. You know why? Because I picked a beautiful wife to make him. Had it all planned out from day one. Well, I can't argue. You that. can't argue. I mean, Them I'm, are my not boys. Gonna, I'm not gonna. I'm about to shake some heads right here, boy. We're gonna set a ripple effect. Trust and believe that. When it all happens, I know what you're gonna say, Stephen A. I'm gonna invite you to the house and make you some pancakes with strawberries, and you're gonna say, This is the best cook I've ever seen in my life. I'll take that up. I know you I, will. I, I'll show up for the pancakes I'm gonna show up for the pancakes. I know, but you know why you didn't get the strawberries. All you're gonna I will do is one that. song. I will do that. I don't know how LeVar did this. Oh, Lord. But he <laughs> is the greatest. LeVar Ball, a man that is a father of three sons, Lonzo, Leandro, and LaMelo. A man that is viewed in the public eye as loud, brash, arrogant, a moron, or even a buffoon. People even go as far to say he is an unfit parent that doesn't have a clue about what is good for his children. And within two years, he has become the most polarizing, the most impactful, but also the most misunderstood person in basketball, and if not all of sports. Our first memory of LeVar came when the UCLA Bruins and his son Lonzo Ball burst onto the scene and grabbed the world's attention. He showcased his playmaking skills and all around game, which caught the attention of many, many people across the country. Then the outrageous statements came out. Lonzo's better than Steph. I could be Jordan one-on-one, or even his most famous one. I'm trying to tell you, I knew this was happening before it was happening. When did you get this hat made? Uh, when he was a baby. What's it like right now that he is in Man, LA Lakers? It's a wonderful feeling, but I already knew what was coming to him. And he did. Lonzo got drafted in the 2017 NBA draft with the number two pick to guess what? The Los Angeles Lakers. And then from then on, we were introduced into the world of the big baller himself. During Lonzo's time as a Laker, LeVar was constantly in the public eye. If he wasn't on first take, he was on Undisputed. If he wasn't on Undisputed, he was on the herd with Colin Cowherd. And notably, when he appeared on the herd, he had an exchange with now ex-co-host Christine Leahy. And LeVar says such awful, disgusting, and sexist remarks to her. Just listen to this. Like I said, there's different amounts. How many? Stay in your lane. Anyway, I'm just curious. I don't even worry about her over there. Like, Every time she scares me to death. She says she scares Lonzo. Lonzo scared of me. She scared I me. That's I'm why I don't look that way. And the world suddenly became up in arms. And apparently some people in this world have selective amnesia and tend to jump into conclusions because they forget what Christine Leahy said to LeVar Ball beforehand. All three sons, you got, you have kids. How rare is it that all three kids want to do the exact same thing? They're being forced to do it. They're being told, you will start basketball at age six, like Lonzo told us. And whenever you asked him a question, I think he said, what, five words? And he looks terrified whenever he's talking. I asked, have you ever had a disagreement with your father? And he said, no. And everyone at this table, we know you at one point or another disagree <laughs> with your parent, unless you're afraid to disagree with your parent. Oh. He looks genuinely afraid. Wow. Interesting. She really questioned his parenting skills and made a claim that Lonzo was afraid of his father because of his quiet demeanor and them never having a problem with each other. It's almost like it's taboo nowadays to see a black man that is heavily involved in his children's life. When the stigma is usually single parent household, broken home, the kid gets famous, and then the story ends there and he carries the family to success. The world isn't used to an African American household that is already put together and the kid still came up and tasted success. Nah, that's just too boring. After this, Leahy constantly described LeVar as a sexist and somebody that is very disrespectful to women, which in fact, it is completely not the case. In my opinion, LeVar's response to her was very, very reasonable because if somebody was really talking down on your parenting skills and pretty much just talking crap about your family that she knows nothing about, you will probably act the same as that way towards her too. The one thing that is still really, really hard for me to understand is that this man has a whole reality show where he just opens up his life and he exposes the whole world to what he really, really does every single day in his family as well. But yet journalists, they tend to misconstrue his words or try to paint him as a villain when you can easily go to his Facebook page and check out one episode to see who he really truly is as a man. 
He is a true family man that puts his family first and wants the best for his kids. The media tends to call him a loudmouth idiot because of his wild claims, but in all reality, he has practiced the one thing that is prevalent in society today, marketing. The way he talks, his vibrant nature, and the way he seems to the way he seems to grab everybody's attention and know what he's really doing, if to some people it really doesn't seem like anything, but the world is still paying attention to him regardless. He sold himself and his boys to the point that he managed to get people to buy his Triple B products. And yes, even some people paid $495 for his son's shoes as well. And another thing LeVar has been taking heat over is his handling of Lonzo's younger brothers, especially LaMelo. Last year, he yanked LaMelo out of Chino Hills High School to play professionally in Lithuania. And it was actually something that him and LaMelo agreed on because if you watch the show, LaVar gave LaMelo two options, stay at Chino Hills or go to Lithuania and start professionally right now. And LaMelo immediately jumped on it. And here's my take about people that heavily criticize LaVar about it. Those are the same exact people that begged Joe Blow to get out of Kentucky or North Carolina just because he's gonna be a lottery pick this year. But in all actuality, most of these kids that go run one and done right now in college, they barely go back to college unless they realize that basketball isn't the only avenue of pay for them. And by then it's probably too late. But the only difference between LaMelo leaving and those college kids, he never stopped going to high school. He was still homeschooled. <laughs> you know, people forget that he graduated with a 4.0 GPA when he went back to Spire after, after Lithuania. And by then he was caught up with his peers, if not already ahead of him. Like, people are really so outraged about what he did, saying, oh, he's blocking his education, always oh, this, always oh, that. He still got through, hell. He's even taking college courses as we speak. But the media doesn't want to tell you all that, huh? <sighs> Crazy. And if you don't believe me, go watch one episode of their, of their reality show on Facebook. Instead of going to a tabloid article where all they do is put dirt on LeVar's name and pay him to somebody that he's actually not. The boards respect and admire their father. Even with the fallout with Alan Foster and the Big Baller brand, Everybody was saying that Lonzo, he alienated his father, he completely stopped talking to him, yada, 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 this, that, and the third. But in all reality, this man woke up at the Big Baller Mansion the day after. Yes, he said that Lonzo was trying to become his own man, which is still great for his career, don't get me wrong. But it's just the fact that the media twist up the LeVar's words so bad and try to make any situation that happens to him bigger than what it already is and try to make the family look bad. That's my problem with it. Now the most recent thing that LeVar has gotten us up into this time is when he appeared on ESPN First Take recently. And him, Molly, Max, and Stephen A, they were discussing about the Lakers and his son Lonzo recently being traded to the New Orleans Pelicans. And then he made this one comment towards Molly Quorum that got everybody talking. Go ahead, go LeVar, ahead, before I, I get back to him. LeVar, can I switch gears with you? for? Because I have a question you here. You can switch gears with me anytime. <laughs> Let's stay oh focused Lord. here. All right. Um, can you please explain to me what the big... Yeah, shocking, right? But if you really look at the clip, towards the end of the clip where Molly gave that that overreacted expression towards him, he was making this gesture, which is, which is he is reiterating that he wants to change topics, switch gears, you know? And one other thing too, when he appeared in 2017 on First Take, he was the same gesture too. Look at this. Big ball. That was very rude. That That's was not very rude. Kids. All right, the it was for the parents. Get that. You already know. Can we switch gears here? Smooth. All right, so after this year, the Lakers need LeVar. But like I said, the media tends to throw out every single point of context, but take that one little piece of the controversy and just blow it up to out of proportions and make the bar look bad at the end of the day. In all reality, it wasn't sexual until Molly gave her face about it. Like, even LeVar himself, too, after, after Molly made her comments, he was kind of shot, too. Like, he was kind of thrown it back. He was like, come on, like, let's talk. What's going on here? And honestly, if Molly really, really thought that was a sexual term when he has a whole wife at home who he was helping rehab after she had a stroke, really try to shoot a shot at her like that, then her mind's in the gutter in reality. And honestly, due to her history, she's not new to sexual innu innuendos that come at her all the time. 
Just listen to this. Okay, okay. Guys, I'm, I'm can, I, can I fantasize not for a second fine. after this Kyrie, Kyrie Irving news? Okay, yeah, so we got... Jalen Jalen Rosen. Go ahead. Oh, my God. I don't know. I think you would like him. Can you guys just pull it together, Why you please? say you guys? I ain't say nothing. I... Oh, and especially this one, too. I need y'all to look at this carefully. Okay. That's, that's what I want you to do when the ball snaps. Come on, Molly. When I get... Which still... <laughs> And you mean to sit here and tell me that a man like LeVar Ball, and you know for a fact that he has a whole family at home that he cares and cares about so much, you really think he was going to throw that away just to shoot a shot at you? And everybody in them and their mama know that you are married to Jalen Rose, whom LeVar respects and is actually have a good relationship with. Just please, just please help him make sense to me. And many journalists as well, such as Jamel Hill, she called for LeVar to be permanently removed off television. But do you know what the funniest thing about that is? Look at this clip about what she said about him a year ago. One thing that you can't accuse LeVar Ball of being, like, he's fun. No matter what you think about his tactics, but he's fun. And he made a complete ass of himself. And he did it in a fun way that I think when you're that self-deprecating and you don't take yourself that seriously, I think that appeals to people. Look, like, love him or hate him, LeVar Ball resonates with people. He's polarizing, he's topical, and I don't love everything that comes out of his mouth either. He's like the drunk uncle at the picnic, right? Correct. Okay, you gotta treat him <laughs> as such. Like, he entertains you sometimes, sometimes you gotta tell him to sit down and have some seats. Wow. Hypocrisy. Pure hypocrisy. LeVar is a man that will always be misrepresented in the mainstream media just for clicks and views. But in all reality, he is a caring father that, yes, maybe he is loud, or maybe he is brash. Maybe he doesn't know when to shut up sometimes. I get it. And yes, maybe he will charge you an overbearing price just to pay for his kid's shoes. Because in all reality, that's how much he sees them as worth. And I respect that, honestly. It's not that he sees his kids as an opportunity. It's because he loves his kids so much and wants to see them, see them do good that he tells them that my kids are worth a billion dollars. Yeah, there's nothing like them. He most famously said these words. These three B's right here is gonna cost you one of them. Because in reality, that's how much he sees his kids as worth. From a fatherly perspective, I do like that and I do really respect that. I think that's really, really dope. The fact that nowadays the stigma in America is that there's always no black fathers present in a household and to see somebody like LeVar doing what he's doing right now and just to see everybody go against him so much. Yes, I get it. He is a loud mouth. Yes, he doesn't know when to shut up sometimes. But in all actuality, he really doesn't do anything wrong to his kids. It's just how the media paints it. They don't get the whole concept of what he's about. Like I mentioned earlier with Ball and the Family, all journalists have to do is actually take time, sit, and look at those clips to see what his family's about, how his kids act around him, how he talks around him. And there was one situation on that show where there was a discussion about tattoos. LeVar, he did not allow tattoos at all. It was a no-no, none of that. And then one day, Jello came home all tied up and his, he had a whole chest piece. And LeVar, yeah, he was all ticked off. But if you were just reading articles in the media, you would think he would probably beat the crap out of him. No, that was not the case. He acted like a regular father would react. He set a house rule, one of the kids broke it, and the, him and the kid talked it out, and he just caught an understanding. And a lot of people, they constantly say he always goes on these talk shows and he just be talking his loud mouth nonsense, and he sound like he doesn't know what he's talking about making the team look bad. But in reality, this man has been right. Look at the Lakers right now and see where they are. Yes, I know they just got Anthony Davis, but before they made that move, what was the public's perception of him? Please tell me, what has LeVar said the whole time who Magic Johnson was? A figurehead, a face, he doesn't have real power. And once he went on first take, he confirmed everything that LeVar has been telling everybody. Jeannie Buss has all the power, but she don't even know how to handle it herself. When he said about Lonzo Ball being one of the most important pieces on the team, I don't agree with him saying that he is the best. But he is pretty damn important to that Lakers team. The Lakers without Alonzo, their defense is terrible. And we've seen him every time he hit the floor. He gives 110% on defense. Even as his offense is not fully developed as what people liked, 
he gave the Lakers the hitters. But who was their point guard? They haven't re-signed Rondo yet. The only point guard they have right now is Isaac Bonga and Alex Caruso. Are those going to be your franchise point guards for the future with LeBron and AD? And not only that, their bench is super skimpy. None of the guys that they had last year re-signed yet. So they literally have seven men to a roster. And you tell me that's going to be a championship team right now? Free agency hasn't ended yet. Who knows what moves they're going to make. But if anything, if they really want to win a ring, they need to buff up on everything on that team. And one thing I do want to say too before I leave. If you're looking at this video right now, get up. Go ask your parents about a man named Richard Williams. Ask them about the public attention that he has received because of his two daughters. I think you might know it pretty well. Ask them about the way he held signs during tennis matches saying, I told you so. Or ask him about the way he talked to the world's number two at the time, Arenza Vicario, telling him before she faced a 14-year-old Venus Williams, good luck, I hope you win. Ask him about all the hate he received in the 90s, how he was portrayed as an angry black father that holds his daughters against their will in order to see his dream play out through them, but was completely shut up as they, were, as they realized he was right all along. I'm going to just let you ask your parents about that yourself. Cause I feel like they'll give a more vivid description than I can. I don't know what it was like back then, but I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. And after you ask them about that, sit there and think about to yourself about what kind of pattern do you see through Richard and LeBar. Just think about that yourself. All right, I appreciate all y'all for joining, and thank you for watching.